Guys, I really need to rescue my celery. Look at it. It's all limp. Flower stems can lift water from the vase all the way up to their petals. And tree roots can soak up water from the soil all the way up to their leaves. So maybe that can work for my celery as well. Hmm, let's give it a try. So guys, how is it possible that water can travel up against gravity? Because gravity is such a strong force. It is really hard to act against it. For example, if I jump, gravity pushes me back down. And this table is where it is because of gravity. The camera that I'm filming this video on is standing where it is and not floating around the room also because of gravity. That's right. I actually like it that way. <laughs> so then how does gravity allow water to travel up through these flower stems? Did you know that water is amazing? It is. Now you do. End of video. Bye. <laughs> Just kidding. Water is amazing because not only is it attracted to itself, but it is also attracted to other substances like cellulose, which can be found in things like flower stems, leaves, tree trunks, and branches. I have an idea. Let's create a similar setup in our Wonder Lab and see how it all works. So guys, as you can see, I've got two glasses. One is empty, one I filled partially with water, and I also added some food coloring to it, just for fun. So I'm going to connect these two glasses with this bridge. This is just a paper towel that I rolled into a, sort of like a tube. So I am going to connect these two glasses. And you can see what happens. As you can see, the water is sticking to the paper towel and it is traveling to this glass. So why is it happening? If you look at this paper towel very closely through a microscope, you will see that it is made up of fibers that are tightly interwoven. And these fibers kind of look like tunnels that crisscross. Water is attracted to that because it's cellulose. It sticks to those tunnels and because water is also attracted to itself, it fills that space within the tunnel and slowly the water is climbing up. This process does take a while, so we're not going to observe it all right here, right now. But I've done this experiment before and it took three and a half days for these glasses to become filled equally. Eventually, the height of water in both glasses was the same. And this force that allows water to travel through those thin tubes upwards against gravity is called capillary force. You know, blood capillaries that carry blood around their body against gravity through thin tubes? I think that's where the name came from. So oh, it's pretty cool. You guys might be wondering, how do these tubes get filled in action? And I have the perfect example to show you. So let's get right to it. This is a very pretty example and it's called blooming flowers. To do this experiment, you will need a plate or a tray and you're going to fill it up with water. You're going to need some paper to make flowers out of. First, I'm going to show you how I make my paper flowers. So first, you're going to take a square piece of paper, you're going to fold it in half, you're going to fold it in half, and then fold it one more time to make a smaller square. Then I'm going to cut it like so to make a petal. 
And then I unfold it. And this is what it looks like. So then I'm gonna fold the petals toward the center. Like so. Then guys, this is the fun part. We are going to dip our flower into our water bath. Look, it just magically unfolds. Yay! Isn't that so pretty? So why does it all happen again? Remember guys, paper is made up of cellulose and water loves cellulose. So as it enters the tiny tubes, they expand, so these creases actually straighten. Kind of like the creases of this balloon straighten when I blow air into it. What if we make our flower out of a paper towel. Let's see what happens then. Oh no! It just sank right away. So why did it sink so fast? Because paper towel has a lot of empty spaces in between its layers. It is full of air bubbles. So when water sticks to the cellulose, it actually fills up that extra space in the paper towel and that makes the whole flower, the whole paper towel, heavy, so it sinks faster. Yeah, definitely not the best material for making flowers. I'm just gonna stick with regular paper. And you can even create your own garden. You can make all sorts of flowers with all sorts of colors and be creative with it. And look guys, my celery rescued itself. I put it in a glass of water and look at it. It's nice and crispy. I was so excited about rescuing my celery that I decided to do another experiment. I took another celery stalk that was dying and I put it in a glass of water into which I added blue food coloring. So this is what I got after a day. This is not the celery I was planning to eat, but it was still cool to see the result. And this is it for today, guys. I will see you in the next episode. Bye.